Let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this conversation. Help us understand we've given us a sincerity for who you are. Help us more importantly to love you more fully and truly. We trust this time and this conversation to you as we say, Amen. Oh, praise the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among them. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord of God. Jeremiah says, uh, 
You are a Mr. Lord. Capitalized yellow. Uh, you are named the mayor. To be united to God's name, to be united to God's life, to God's being, God's essence, to have God dwelling within us and be joined to God. Already God's people who have had this privilege of being belonged to Him in a special way. He's baptized the name, He baptized the trail to God. But notice that though there is one name, there are three who are named. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of three. The one name, the one God, the one being, has three. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One divine name, one God, we have three great names. And the 5th century creed, that nation creed, says that the Catholic faith is this, we worship one God, the Trinity, and the Trinity of unity. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, there are not three gods, one God. The Trinity is the central mystery of the Catholic faith. It's the most important foundation of the entire faith, that God is Trinity. And all too often we hear this kind of pass over, to complicate, it's too much, to speak, ignore it. Think about it kind of briefly, but we need to kind of pass over and shut it. So we're going to look at why does this matter when God is right? Where are the scriptures that say that Jesus taught these to God is Trinity? And finally, what's it mean that this is true? We'll start at the why should we care about this? This is the inner mystery of God. God is different than anything else. God, God is the creator, God is divine, God is the light of the power of nothing else. Real quick, the word mystery when it comes to theology and yes, Really, three meter meters. And one of those words, unfortunately, have no context. So, mystery has three meter meters. The first meaning, of course, is something we have to solve. We don't mean that. No, that's not the case. For the detective mystery, there's something that's hidden, something that's shut, or something we find out. Mystery can also be the sacrament. The sacrament is the Latin word for those gifts of God, is that the seven sacraments? In Greek, it's the mystery. And because our Mass are reiterated in Greek, it's kind of echoes of this in the Mass. So at, at, the, at the Eucharist, at the consecration, we say the mystery of that. Or times on the prayers, we'll say these divine mysteries, talking about the Eucharist, the sacraments. Don't let that hear me. We're talking about this this concept is something we can't know by ourselves. And can never know fully. It's not that it's against our reason or, or impossible or wrong or false, it's just it's bigger than we are. We can't grasp it fully. The Trinity, being the inner and all the secret of God, being who God is in Himself, is something we can prove. It's something we can figure out our own. The fact that God is greater than we are and bigger than we are, He's infinite and we're not. We're never going to come to the death of this, by the way, is what we talk about the mission of the rosary. It's really this, right? It, it's playing to this. Life, every life of Christ, every Christ's life, is a mystery because he's both God and man. So there are depths to what he's doing and why he's doing it, we never reach. We always get more, we always learn more, we always get more. Yeah. We have to be told it, even though we're told it, there's always more to know. Uh, this is possible or false or wrong, it's just bigger than me. By showing 
is true, God has shown us a number of different things. First of all, there are certain things that flatter flatter about. Right? You know, the stranger don't tell you that. There are certain secrets of who you are. You're not going to share with personal ones. When God says he has described himself as Trinity, he's about the inner mysteries of his very life and inviting us to be part of it. It's an invitation to friendship. It also reveals something about ourselves. The fact that God is Trinity shows us why we're made for union and unity. Right? God says in the beginning, it's not for man to be alone. Because God himself is alone, even though there's only one, he's alone. We're always alone. It's not good for us to be alone for man and God in our life. It's made for unity. First of all, with God, but also with each other. This is why the main commandments are love God, love your neighbor, it's yourself. Let them look like you never saw both of them. Because they're made in the image of the Trinity. Each of us is made in the image of the eternal tribe of God, and we have this, this need for union with himself first and each other. It shows us that God has a need for, for, for it to create us. If God were purely alone, there would no Trinity. You can say, oh, maybe God's alone. Maybe God needs someone to love. Way people who are alone with themselves, they kind of need a pet. Or need it in one way, but not that they need Maybe we can get God's pets. Well, no. <laughs> God needs to create. But God desires us to be with Him and show us as well. The death of means we call us to join His fall. See, for God, fatherhood is not simply a title or a nice little made up thing. What he's saying is, I want you to have a relationship with me the way my divine son has with me. So understand that more deeply what he wants to have with us, even what he wants for us, the way he's calling us to. This is why it's important to understand God is striving for this mystery. Questions on this so far? Good. Okay. So, why couldn't we figure this out by ourselves? There was, you know, before we can prove the soul, we can prove God is, exists, we can prove all kinds of things. Why can't we prove God is trying? Well, we know God by his effects. <coughs> we can prove God exists by his effects. Remember, we talked about the engine and the train. We can't go out and examine the engine when the train's moving, you can still know that there's an engine in the back that moves. But could you know if there were two engines or one engine? No, you couldn't. All you could say is it must be an engine because they're moving. You couldn't know if there were ten engines or one engine or three engines or four engines or two or not. And so because we know God has effects, the effects are one. But he's doing this one thing, and so we can only know by a reason that there is a God. In fact, that God is trying, even we can't know what he tells us. Again, this is not against our reasons, it's not beyond reasons, it's not nonsense, it's just bigger than us. The fact is, after we know that God is crying, all of a sudden we start seeing everywhere it hits, even before Christ shows us. He said, in the scripture, we see it in nature. There's already hints that God is trinity. So for example, in Hebrew, the word for God is Elohim. Every time you see a word that ends with L, that's referring to God. So Michael, Mikael, means who is like L, who is like God. Nathaniel is gift of God. Raphael is strength of God. So these are, and in the end, they always means relation to God. Elohim. So there's a cherub and cherubim, this used to use these words um, even in English. Or seraph and seraphim. Cherub is one, cherub is two. In Hebrew, the true God is plural. And so the word used in Hebrew for the one true God, so let's say Elohim is one. They're going to say the gods, he is one. That's what 
how it leads to destruction. God speaks the plural. Let us make man our inner language. Still using he, still using one, still using there was only one God, but it's plural words. In the book of Genesis, as Abraham is, is waiting for the birth of his eyes and waiting to be God's prophet to be fulfilled, or appears as three men. Abraham was sitting by his, his tent on the terabit of Mamre, the day was hot, and there was three men. Isaiah the bishop, he had his on the wall, or is the bishop of the wall, in Isaiah 6. And this is the seraphim chanting out three words. In Hebrew, there is no superlative. We can't say more, better, best. And good, better, best is what I'm saying. We can't compare it. You have to compare it by generations, by talking big, by the seal. That's why you have things that Christ is saying, says in the scripture, let's create your father and your mother who can't, can't do my fault. There are, there are Hebrewisms that everyone understood, but we say it's million degrees outside. We know what that means. The pastors look at us in the way with nothing degrees outside. At the measure degrees. It makes no sense. But in Hebrew, the way that they, they would emphasize this to repeat a word, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Mani Mani Tatani, say it, I think it's the greatest of what we call our whole measure, they would say it three times. And so you have Isaiah when the angels appear, they say, not holy, 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 holy is the Lord out of hosts. The hosts, but holy, holy, holy. On the there are also many hints in nature. Here are examples. A white light has three primary colors red, blue, and green. Geo has three kingdoms, and a legend mineral. Time has three states, past and future. Matter has three forms, so I'll put it Obviously, three dimensions. Oh, the relationship is this uh, direction of the speed. So there are hints in the nature. So it matters that God is triune. Otherwise, we don't know God. It matters that God is triune, but we don't know who we are. We don't know why we're made or what we're made for, but come from God. This is who God is, friendship with God, this is union with God, this is the country flows to our God. Let's look at the Trinity in the Bible. The first thing to be aware of is the word Trinity does not appear in the Bible. This is a third century Latin word invented by Anthropolian, uh, something means the triunity, the three in one, the three in one. Tri like tricycle, three, unity, one. Even the word's not there, the reality is very clear. Remember, the Old Testament is preparation, Christ comes out of some fear. Let's look first of all where we see the Father's God, and when the Son's God, the Holy Spirit's God, and the Holy Trinity. So, how do we know the Father's God? Again, it's not going to be a complete list, but we'll give a couple of few examples left to show this very clearly. The scripture is very clear that the Father is God. So in John chapter 2, the temple is called the Father's house. In John 4, he says he worship the Father. In Matthew 5, he talks about the heavenly Father. St. Paul says very explicitly in Corinthians, Second Corinthians, the God of the Father on Jesus Christ. In Ephesians, God our Father, God our Father. Ephesians chapter 3. Before the flood, when every heaven in heaven earth was met. It's very clear God is the Father's God. It's very clear it's Christ's God. And only two examples always want to be given. First of all, Jesus says he is. In John chapter 8. Amen. Amen. I say to you, for Abraham came to be, I am. But I was, but I am. Or I am is God. 
they have existed on Melbourne. This is kind of that was third line. John chapter 10, Paul Ryder 1. This is also why he's sought to be killed. Um, you read the scripture, the reason why he's crucified is for blossom. He says, I'm done. And the Jewish people understood him saying this. Um, they knew that he was saying this, that's what he was saying this, and they believe it. They understood the Bible. Very clear in the Torah of St. John. In the beginning was the word, the word is with God, the word was God. Not only that, our Lord says and does things no human being can do. He forgives sins. There were used to be human beings forgiving sins because of the confession. Why is that strange? Well, it should be strange to us. This is a power that only God can have. It's not strange to us because God gave his disciples that power. We're used to that. But you only got forgiven because you go to God, because God has chosen to forgive. But God alone can forgive sins. Man can forgive in God's name, when we have with God, or as God presented it, Christ just forgives. He heals simply by command. Centurion says in Christ's reply, or only say the word Christ will be healed. He just says you make those who believe in God. He doesn't have to command it, it's just it's evil, it's God. He's with authority. He even will correct and add the scripture. The word said, before an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, I say to you, those who are angry with the Bible, done. You imagine me getting up at the altar one day and saying, you know what? You're going to say in the scripture, Christ said this, but I'm going to tell you something else. <laughs> Still don't give it up. Or pull out the altar and say, Father, you're going to take a good lie down. It's crazy, right? You read the scripture, Christ wrote this, it's tough for us. It's crazy all the time. Because it's a crazy thing to say. I say to you, you know, you've heard this, but not time to this. Only God can do this. Only God can correct and add and complete scriptures. He says, following him is more important than any family member or even a life. Again, imagine me saying this to you. Listen to this for the first time, and it's coming from me. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of it. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy. Who is take this cost of the last thing is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life and loses it, or loses life for my sake, will find it. Again, we are used to the good boys God, of course, can say that, but this is a shocking thing. We should be kind of shocked all over again at what Christ is saying. You know, this is something only God can say. He raised the death of life by us in that. He has power over nature. Right? The storm commonly simply says the way to be still, but it's still the wise man. All these prove he's God. Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is perhaps the most confusing person to us because like, Father and Son are human terms. Spirit is not. Here's Spirit, we can think of. Medical spirits, or we think of uh, you know, party spirit or feelings. It's the word we're trying to use to describe God, but it's kind of the Don't think of this is a person, someone loves us, someone we can love, so we should have a relationship with. The Holy Spirit has power and authority of Himself. So for instance, Christ says in the Gospel of John, the last supper of the Apostles, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who follows in my name, will teach you everything. They're behind all I told you. He's going to teach everything. He gives the mind to the divine man to the church. While the worship of the Lord was fast, the Holy Spirit came and said, It's apart from me, for I was the soul, the work of the church. I have hope. Worshiping God, the Holy Spirit comes and answers. He's God. The Holy Spirit guides the church, to the leaders. Keep watch over yourselves and the whole flock which the Holy Spirit appointed. It's offended by sin. 
Do not grieve the Holy Spirit, which you were sealed with the day of redemption. We were sealed with God's name, we were sealed by God and God. So God will be offended by us. But the Holy Spirit is grieved by our sins. God told the angels are grieved by our sins, or Mary is grieved by our sins, or oh, God is grieved. The Holy Spirit is grieved by our sins. He enables the apostles to forgive sins. God forgives sins. Jesus agrees with them the apostles and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. And now the sins you forgive are forgiven. The sins you retain are retained. He's the one who forms Christ as his man on the heart of the first man. You are guided to do this. The angel says, The Holy Spirit will upon you, the power of Christ will shadow you, the power of the Holy Spirit will shadow you. Other places we show up too, hope that's enough to see the Father's God, the Holy Spirit's God, the Son's God. The scripture also has Trinity in many places too. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all together. Look at a few of the examples. Annunciation. Annunciation. By the way, when is the feast of Annunciation? March 25th, nine days before what day? His mistake, December 25th. Yep, yeah, good. So this is when from God becomes man with part of it. The term renunciation is sort of what the angel announces to Mary that she become the mother of God. The Holy Spirit will come upon me. And, and Mary asks, How is it possible that God would become man or bear a son without knowing a man? And Gabriel says to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And he, the power of the Most High. This is a name for God, overshadowing. And the overshadowing is actually a reference to, to a Jewish wedding ceremony where the groom kind of put his cloak over the head of the bride. So the power of overshadowing. And therefore, the one key morning will be called the Holy Son of God. Holy Spirit will be upon you, the power of the overshadowing you, the one key morning will be called the Son of God. And by the way, if you look at the Greek, which is a side note, because you're on a fact for the day, it's of the day. The Greek does not say child. It's the holy thing he born of you, what we call it almost not, I don't know. Um, it, it, it uses a neuter term, because it's talking about God, the be gone, or etc. Uh, holy thing he born of you, we call it son of the child. The baptism, they make it all, all the gospels. After people have been baptized, Christ was also baptized and praying, heaven was open. Holy Spirit said upon him the form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, with you I am pleased. So the Father's voice speaks, Holy Spirit is upon him, but shadows him, and the Son is there being baptized. Turn it. The last son. I will ask the Father. He'll give it another advocate, he'll do all of it, the spirit of truth. Because the world can't accept as either sees or knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will with you. You don't ask yourself. There's three mentioned. I, the speaker, the Father, the Son, the one who sent. Don't, don't ask yourself, send yourself, you, that's his name, that's So the, the Jesus promises another advocate, and one like himself, the same power, authority, Himself. So there's one who was sent, one who was asking, one who was sent. Not only. There's St. Paul, St. Peter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, be the Holy Spirit with you all. It's not from here. It should. Our Peter, the Apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, the knowledge of God the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The strength of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a very clear term. You give other, other examples as well, but I think this is enough for our purposes. Again, we'll talk about this all the rest of our lives. I did it now. I'll try to do it now. Let's see if we can do Why did Christ just say, God is true and God is one? Why is there a homily of the Trinity? We have Christ's prayer at the Last Supper, the Gospel of John, Christ's lost the Father, you know, these, these pieces. Why do you have a homily? Like, you've read a life of this course. 
is so important. Why is it matter? God is why I should say, by the way, guys, God is three and God is one. Let me explain that. Remember, things might be, might be more simple, are always more simple to us. I can speak a really complicated phrase in English, or a very simple phrase in Greek. And most people in this room, I think, will understand the Greek phrase far less than the complicated phrase in English. Right? Something beyond our comprehension of who God is, and what God is, and how to approach God, this is just too far beyond us. God, Christ, we try to talk about. He just shows us. Here's the Father, here am I, here's the Holy Spirit. Now you know who we are. The words don't matter as much. It's not discourse. Uh, no human words can ever describe God perfectly. There's always more to discover, more to find, more to think about, more to pray on, more to grasp. Because again, it's not facts, it's a relationship, it's a union. If Christ shows us, God tells us. It does tell us. There's a discourse. There's also some historical reasons. Christ has taught the Jewish people. If you look at the Old Testament history, it takes a really, really, really long time for them to understand it's only one God. The time of the Old Testament, every nation had their own God. And the people kind of believed that, well, yes, the God of the Amorites, those are the gods over there. Then the gods of the Canaanites spend territory here. But each, each gods were their own nations too. And so they kind of said, okay, well, well the gods over here, that belongs to those nations, the gods over there are those nations. And people went to war. It wasn't just the people's war, it was the gods going to war too. So when I conquered you, I conquered your gods. My gods conquered your gods. They were, they were bigger than your gods. So the Jewish people, they didn't say, oh, yes, well, Yahweh brought me here and protected me. That's what I mean. There aren't gods over there. Maybe there are gods over there. That's no one gods over there in the, in, in the Amorites. So they, they have their own gods. It took a really long time for people to get, no, there's only one god on the whole earth, and other gods are the gods. There are, there are other things. They're made up, or they're demons, or combination of the two. It took a really, really long time. And the final thing that really got in people's heads was the Babylonian captivity. About 500 years before Christ, or 70 years of exile, they kept worshiping these false gods. And finally, God. They got so well and so strongly buried. This is when they began to turn away from saying God's name. Because God is just more than any other thing. This is when the Pharisees arose. They rose because they wanted to hold oh, God perfectly. This is when, and so if God had depressed us to the top of the Trinity, people would be like, wait a minute, whoa. This, whoa, 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 whoa. We just, no, 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 God. Well, wait a minute. You know, if he had said, I'm God, or they would have thought he was talking about God. Oh, God. And so again, Revelation would have given, but wouldn't have been understood. And so God, Christ here, shows, and very gentle, very slow, but it's all there. Now, is it possible that there, there are three different gods? Through the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, really there are three different gods. Yeah. Yes, you know. Remember what it means to be God. To be God is to be first, to be best, to be great. How many first, best, and greatest can there be? One. I don't care what they tell you, and they put the trophies you get these days, they want the one first. One well, first place. Only one God. Let me give you a more complicated explanation. It might help, but not. It doesn't help, but don't worry. We already have a little bit more first, best, and greatest. That's not. Let me give you a more complicated, less often reason that might help, might not. Doesn't. You know. Two different things have to be 
distinguish by different things, different parts. So if there's physical objects, like there's two different markers, makes them different markers, they're both markers. They're both black markers, they're both the same company, the same brand, they're different markers. Not because of any like, the power that one has, but because of different material parts. Right? When it comes to things that are material, it gets more complicated. When I speak to you, I say an idea, so that's not material, a phrase, an idea. Let's get ice cream. It's an idea, it's that idea that that, that wisdom, desire, that invitation is not physical. Now it's near my end of my mind. Maybe you're hungry now. <laughs> All this is near my mind. What makes it different is that it is now the idea is possessed. Possessed by you, possessed by me. It's still the same idea. When it comes to things that are completely immaterial, angels, God himself, it can't be a difference in material things. It's not material. Has to be difference either in power, greatness. Sometimes the missing thing has to has to be present or missing. What does matter? If something is missing, it can't be the first, the best, the greatest. So we can only again if you look at the fact that there are material parts. Let's talk about it. Even if there were two gods, first of all, what would have to be less than the other? What would have to be less? And the less god would really be the god. Because it would have, because it would have, to, would have to get something from the greater god. They have to receive it from the greater god. They have to get, if they get to receive something, it's going to be created. It's created, it's not really god. So, again. Most important reason we know this is true about God, that God is one and three, is because again, Christ told us. I am the Father of one, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember, though, that the faith will not change. But God is real to us, is real to us as God. However, over time, we can understand more clearly. Hopefully, personally, as we study and learn and think and pray, we understand more deeply about who God is and what the faith is. But even the church herself as a whole, we understand more deeply and more greatly. The way she explains it is more clear. The way she is, is defined is more clear. To make certain that this truth was always taught correctly and perfectly, God gave a great gift to the church called the Catholic. This basically means that they, the church is never going to make a mistake, never going to fall away. I use the analogy before, but in the football game, they all of a sudden have to throw the ball and something catch the ball. And so you have to have a, have a good passer and a good receiver. You can't just have a ball. But we have a good, a good passer, a terrible receiver, you're not going to go very far on the field. The church is the receiver, it has to be the perfect receiver. God's going to make certain she receives and retains and keep going down the generations and truth. It's never lost for God or change. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, individuals can't fall away. Individuals do. It doesn't mean that people who are in authority can't say things that are stupid. They certainly can. It doesn't mean they can't say things that are confusing. They certainly can. It doesn't mean people can't understand. They certainly have all the time. What it means, though, is the church will not ever, ever officially teach, never officially fall away. And even the heresies help clarify what the truth is. So, if, for example, you want to know who my mother was, and there's a bunch of people over there, so who's, your, who's your mom? Oh, she's over there in the corner. You say, oh, well, she's the woman over there with the white hair. Well, that's not my mother. She's only one extra. Oh, the one over there, the blonde hair, no, not the blonde hair, blonde, but the you know. Gradually it becomes more and more clear who you're talking about. The heresy, different ways to talk about Christ, different things that said about our Lord that were wrong, help clarify 
and he is declared by the gods. Historically, we'll see this happening in the, in the centuries. Um, first, the church had clarified that Christ was really God, was really a man, right? People knew he was God. They said, well, of course, God could really become man. He's pretending. He's kind of, he looks like a man, he appeared as a man, he's really a man. No, he really died, he really suffered. So, okay, well, he's not really God. No, he's really God. Okay, well, he's really God, man, but he doesn't have a human soul. No, he really has a human soul. Okay, well, he doesn't have a human will. No, he has a human and So, these things could have been clarified or sent to the percent. In the uh, kind of the back page of your um, full text version, if you list these heresies, you're going to memorize them just kind of as uh, definitions of good to know what they are, good to know, good to know where they come from. Um, you'll see that there, there's each page that back and back. There's that, that they should read that list of heresies, some errors. Atheism, polytheism, and atheism. Uh, these are all kind of first set of errors, heresies that uh, point around. This has a no best thing. Is it a complete list or a no. partial list? No, it's a partial list. It's the kind of ideas. Uh, a complete list would be, would be much more able, much bigger than that. Mm-hmm. It took about 700 years to clarify terms, to clarify. Turns out that that old language to describe the Trinity, to describe Christ, to describe these things. And for a long time, you had various words that were being used that. I mean, the opposite of pain and wisdom. There's that, that whole language, because, because only God is three in one. Um, only Christ is one person, but two natures. And so these, this language didn't exist yet to describe that. Let's now take a dive into what is the truth? This is a very difficult talk. We have to look at some. Definitions, some phrases, some ideas that have been clarified over many hundred years. Uh, this is, of course, this is a quick introduction to this. This is a quick into it. Uh, to talk more about it, if you want to, and ask questions with it, please do. So these are very important. These terms are very important. They're very technical. So you have to get some technical frames. So God is, there is one God in three persons. Well, what is a person? A person, in the words of class definitions, individual substance. Jail or punished for a crime, you know, they're bad dog, they're bad cats. They don't put them in jail. 
the cat reason of, of the freedom of a human being. And so and even, if, even if a particular individual doesn't have the freedom to reason about it, I'm sleeping, I don't lose my mind, I can't reason or think or have you know, choice, but my nature is going to change. If I became the coma for the rest of my life, I'm going to stop being a baby. I'm still the same nature, even if I can't use it. So free will, intellect, and all. There are three distinct kinds of persons. There are human persons, there are angelic persons, and there are divine persons. So angels are people, people are people, and God is people. To be a human person, be a human being is to be of a nature, body and soul. Person that's body and soul. The angel is kind of a nature that has no body, it's pure spirit, intellect and free will. This choice to love they have to truly be a friendship. And without free will, there's no love, no friendship, no you. Intellect lets you understand and know what they got. It's easier to compare three human beings to the divine. If you have Bob, Steve, and Mary. This is my lovely drawing. <laughs> you have here three human persons. They're each individual people, they can think, they can love. You have three human natures. These have their own distinct nature, supposed to be. Own body and soul. So you have three human beings. Then you have a trinity. That's a trial. <laughs> you have three divine persons the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You only have one divine nature. One divine nature. One divine being. Would it make sense to say that they can't disagree with one another? That they're all three of them are always in agreement? More than that, they they have the same intellect. The same will. It's not three intellects, three wills. One intellect, one will. God. They're truly one, but truly three. Truly three distinct persons, three distinct individuals, three distinct subjects, and only one God, one being, one nature. So we're so united in one intellect, one will, one being. Fair, right? <laughs> Let's go into a, a, a human now. So the, the, the best way to describe this is because of the image of God, we have in our own intellect and free will. A reflection of who God is and a hint to understand the truth. So let's look at this. I'm going to erase the bottom. If you notice, you'll come across phrases where the Father is the first person of the Trinity, the Son is the second person of the Trinity, the Father is the third person of the Trinity. It's not an act. God the Father is Father in a real way. He is the first person. Not in terms of power or time or but in terms of their nature. Look at this minute. Because he is the origin and wellspring of the Trinity. Not in time, not in power, not in majesty, but truly first, truly origin. The Son is the world. The Son is the second. Personal Trinity. Because he is the world. Human that. Whenever we have ideas, Concept of what this is, if you take it apart and examine 
it, the property of the ink. You have in your mind, in your intellect, an interior world, a concept that expresses everything you know about this. Or if I say love, you have an interior concept in your mind that expresses what love is. Or I say ice cream, the concept in your mind expresses ice cream. have an interior word in our minds and our heads, our intellects, our soul, really, which contains those ideas. Now, some ideas are personal knowledge. We're more of close to us, more of who we are, or more central to who we are as people. But ice cream is a very personal. But there are ideas you have in your mind that really capture, express who you are. Now, we get ideas, we still learn concepts from where? From the outside. Right? It begins by your sense that we see, know, touch, who we are, through that, understand who we are, we come to know who we are. Little things by dealing with from our senses. Before God created, what was outside of him? Nothing. Only God existed. So God's idea, God's knowledge is of himself. And God being God is not so perfect, so personal, so complete. It's not just capturing who he is, it's another person. God's interior world is supreme, it's a personal, personal, so real. It acts as another person, an individual, another, another subject, this is the divine self. So the son is the perfect image of the father, perfectly reflects the father, perfectly up and up, up. complete, like the father, this perfect outpouring of the Father's knowledge and wisdom. That's simply an idea of the person, because the Father himself is a person. And if it weren't another person, it would be a perfect idea of a different person. The Holy Spirit is third. Sorry, I'm going to stop. This is word there. I can't talk right at the same time, apparently. The Holy Spirit is the third person. Because he proceeds from the Father and the Son. You could also say from the Father through the Son. That's not a discussion entirely, but both are both are The Spirit comes from Latin, Latin word spiritus, meaning breath in your son. Hebrew, it's ruach, which also means breath or wind. This is why Christ breathes upon the apostles, given the Holy Spirit. This is why in the beginning of the Genesis, the Father breathes into the mud, the clay, and it becomes living. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. It's the, the sigh of God. And again, coming now into the wind. I see something good that I love. There's an image now in me that's yearning in my, my soul or something like ice cream. Now there's yearning this image in my heart with the ice cream I want to have. It's yearning for me. You're not very personal. There are yearnings I have, loves I have, but personal to who I am, kind of to who I am. The Father to the Son. Knows the Son, sees the Son, sees how good the Son is. So it's perfect, this is Son, it's my mother's Son, no more please. Loves the Son. Looks at the Father and sees the Father and loves the Father. Everything I do is to please the Father and always my Father's will. Their love is so real, so perfect, so, so personal. It's the sigh of love, it's the sigh of love. That's a person. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that personal, the person, is the sigh of love that is. God Himself, third divine person. Yeah, not not time, not power, not majesty, but in procession, in relation. Only difference between the Trinity is their relationship to each other. It's only difference. And more than that, because they're God, this is something that happened long ago and it stopped. 
The Father eternally begetting the Son. The Son eternally with the Father spirating, Kirby was breathing forth the Holy Spirit. Trinity eternally coming to be, and it was eternally that, it eternally is. See, in the end, to be God is to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To be the Father is to be the one God. To be the Son is to be the one God. Those are is to be the one God. We have to describe it in terms of first, and second, and third, and be the time this is happening now. The Father knows, the Son is known, we love each other, the love is the Spirit. This is the relationship we're invited into. This adoption, this union, this knowledge of being sons in the Son. Right, is all this? Yes. Um, so, during creation, before Jesus was incarnate, all the Old Testament, was he still the Son? Was he called yes. the Son? Yeah. Even though he wasn't like a human? Has human nature yet? Yes, still so so. Yeah. Um, it wasn't described that way. That's a human term. But the relationship is still the same. If you look at the Old Testament, where the Son is active, it's in creation. And so the Son being the image of the Father, the unbidden image of the Father, creates as the created image of the Father. And so when the Father speaks, this is created the Son. And there be light. Is it just God saying the light? This is God, the Father saying, I'm going to create through the image of my son, or reflect my son, these created things. The sun is the pattern of the universe. This is why the sun comes to heal and save, because he is the, the created the image with created image. Yeah. Because it sounds just like pantheism. Kind of. It can, and while it all sounds, you got to be very careful, right? Because yeah. it's easier for us to say, okay, the three gods, or we're all gods, you're God, now I'm God. Three gods, speak from us, you know, we have to go back together. We're one God, three persons, they're not us, that will be. So don't be that. There's only one God, I'm not him. Eternally the Son, and eternally be the God of the Father. The one Spirit eternally be inspired the Father and the Son, the Father who's described both ways. Human concept describing a incomprehensible reality in history. Three divine persons, subjects, authors, individuals, one divine nature, one divine being. One collect, one will. Or the Father, the side, Father, Son, who truly love for each other. So God is love because this is the truth. God is truth because the pattern of all creation. He's the way the Father is on the He is the Son of the Father. He becomes mad because He comes to heal us and to heal our image. Which is broken by sin. You see, is the image of the Father, the image of the Father. God created the image perfect image of the Father. We're created the Father broken by sin, and he comes out to heal us, coming from one of us. <coughs> this is all <called> lies. <laughs> Without Christ coming without to help 
not be forgiven our sins, no man, no so, exist. So the only way for us to love God is through Jesus? Because yes. It's like he's reflecting. Yep. Not only that, it's the, he, on the cross he went this grace. Although well, look, look next few lessons to the sanctifying grace and what it does for us. A sanctifying grace has come from him. We're not alive. Our soul are alive. We can't please God around his children. Sanctifying grace, this relationship with the Father, in a creative way. That's similar to what the Son has been. Holy Spirit is life. Life breath of creation. Life. The life breath of creation. So if you look, if you look, if you look at, at, at Genesis, he breathes into Matthew's uh, dad. Look, look, look at that. John, he breathes into that. Can I go to the other children? He breathes in that, he breathes in the apostles, and, and then they become alive and they do the life works. Right. The Pentecost comes in the form of fire and wind. It's breath of God. And Elijah, the dead and roots, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sends, he commands, and lines. So he's the one who he's the one who applies. We'll have a lesson the Holy Spirit later on because he's so complicated and he's a lot more obscure to us. We'll talk to him when he's by himself. Um, but we'll see that he's the one who applies what Christ wants to us. So we have to have the Spirit of God to, to become the Son of God. And again, this is so important to know. You can also know this without knowing it. You know, know that God loves me and I'm the Father and He enjoys what comes to me. Right? You talk to your, your six year old inside of God and they say, I remember, as a person, no, I don't know. All you know is. It, as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the real people, and He loves them, and they're called to become friends with them. That says all this. Eventually, they should know this. But we start by God loves you, wants to be friends with you, and God cares about you personally. You're invited to have a relation. You do that by following His Son Jesus, and like Jesus, you do that through sacraments, through prayer, and through doing good things like Jesus, with His help. His law is fruit of his grace. It says all this. This is just the deeper and more wise. W H Y, not W I S E. So the story is of Augustine and the angel. One brief analogy. Oh, stop. Sorry. What are we catching on this? Sorry. This, 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 this is the equator. Right? <laughs> this is the mystery. But this may be enough to chew on for a bit. Uh, but what other questions that you can verify this? this? This is so profound, so beautiful, and so important. I mean, it doesn't get more important than this. Don't get this. You don't know what Jesus says. You don't know why I have why, why to listen to what Jesus says. Why can he say that? Because of who he is. Why did Kerry die on the cross? Because of who he is. Why should this is what he says when I only do other things? Because of who he is. I can't be good, I can't be clean, I can't go to heaven without following him. One analogy, and it is an analogy, is the human family. It's all things, that their goodness and existence from God. We can look at created things and understand the created way who God is. In the human family, love of husband and wife creates life. And the unity of the family is the source of origin of love. Not simply an emotion, but a choice. And God truly had these persons, the union together, breathe forth life. Unity of life and love doesn't destroy the persons, but completes and elevates and makes them perfect. But 
It's helpful. But it's not now. Remember, there's no division of God. And the, the uh, it's not that God reflects the human fact. The human fact is so perfect and intimate. It's that the love of God is so intimate and perfect. Only a, a human family close to expressing when it comes to faith. So remember, God does reflect us, we reflect God. So if God is the ultimate source, we're trying to make God fit to who we are. We have to just touch up and say, okay, this is a analogy to what God is not all the way around. Let me read to you a, a, a phrase from the Athanasian Creed. Uh, so this is a, a creed explanation of faith. Written before the year 500. I don't know exactly when it was written. Um, it was probably not written by St. Athanasius, who died in the fourth century, but it reflects his thought, and so it attributed to him for a very long time. Whoever will be saved, for all things necessary, is to say, he holds the cap of faith. Which faith said he wanted to keep hold of the Bible. Thou got to Paris, hell. In other words, you know any better, you don't care, you're in trouble. Obviously, you know any better, you're the best, that's worse. The fear of the thing is this worship one God, Trinity, Trinity, Unity. I think if you're confusing the persons, three individuals, two subjects, the persons, nor the kind of substance. It's not three substances, three, three gods, three beings, or fully one. There are divided substances. Only one nature, one being, one substance. There is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, so what? Glory, equal, magic, co eternal. Such as the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Ghost. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Ghost uncreated. The Father incomprehensible, infinite, perfect. The Son incomprehensible, the Holy Ghost comprehensible. The Father of eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Ghost eternal. There are not three eternals, there is only one eternal. There are three uncreated, there are only one created, three incomprehensible. Only created and one uncomprehensible. Likewise, the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, the Holy Ghost is Almighty, but there are not three other ones that are Almighty. So the Father is God, the Holy Ghost is God, the Son is God. We have three gods and one God. Likewise, the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Ghost is Lord. We have three Lords and one Lord. Predestiny is compelled by Christian truth to acknowledge every person by himself to be God and Lord. Forbidden by the Catholic religion to say there are three gods and one Lord. The Father is made of God. Either created or God. The Son is the Father alone. Not made or created by God. For the ghosts of the Father and the Son of the Son that are made or created or God that proceed. So there is one Father, not three fathers, once not three sons, but the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost. In this Trinity, there is not a four after, none who is made or less than another, the perks of all eternal together. But all things, as we said before, unity and Trinity, Trinity and Jesus worship. He that must be saved, think this of the Trinity.
It was four dogmas. Randallism was four dogmas. Trying to combine the connected together in our minds. Trinity, the incarnation, the church. So the Trinity we talked about this is the last one. <laughs> Incarnation, or until we not understand that Christ is God. The fact that he became man and died for us and talked to us and listened to us makes no sense. We understand that God himself became man to live with us, to walk with us, to speak with us, and to save us. Now this metaphor. We come to know the great secret of who God is because God is going to be in the face and in the heart. Love in a human way and spoke in a human way and died in a human way to bring us to eternal life. The church is made by the Trinity to the sake and draw us into the life of the Trinity. The church reflects the Trinity because being a separate person, yet one is to the body. Flex God was three persons, yet one God. For us, we're made into the life of I said, God will soul walk. God is trying. And so we reflect God in our soul, we think we love. And we're, we're never able to have a relationship. We think we love the purpose of relationships. That's how God is three persons in relation. Questions? Let's close the prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of conversation together. Help us understand more deeply who you are, love you more truly, and to ponder more fully what you've done for us you, I love. And all that we say and do, be for your glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Lord, you with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.